Museum of Thetford Life. It's not gold or silver or precious jewels that I'm seeking, but it's something that is made from old rags and waste paper. Thetford pulpware. If you didn't know what these objects were made from, you'd easily believe them to be fine ceramics and quality lacquerware. But beware, for they flatter to deceive. They are waste paper and mashed rags cunningly painted to make affordable household items for the poorest. And very good business it was too. Tell me a bit about how important the industry was in, in this town. Well, it, it started off in the 19th century, in the 1870s, and on an ancient site it had been uh, making paper and then before that it was a, a mill right the way back to doomsday times. And then um, through, the, through the 20th century, um, especially after the closure of the steam engine works, the Burrells works in Thetford, it was one of the main industries that was left in the town. So it's made of paper, but it doesn't look as though it's made of paper at all. It looks like uh, china and, and all sorts of other materials. It's very ingenious. It is ingenious. It was a, a patent system that they used here. And they, they made it into a pulp. They formed it into little metal formers and they stamped it out, they used linseed oil and it was, it was quite a process to end up with these beautiful products that you see here. Lots of different colours, lots of different paint finishes. Uh, I think it's great. Today, pulpware has suddenly become fashionable to collect. For so many it was a reminder of harder times past, discarded and replaced as soon as increased wealth allowed. But the ingenuity of the manufacturers was marvellous. Here we see one that is in a sort of preformed state and you can see the, the colour. I think this one probably has had its linseed oil because uh, they soak them in linseed oil to make them good and waterproof. And it is, uh, in this state, it is absolutely rigid, isn't it? It's very hard and what I find surprising is that this is actually for, a, um, for growing bulbs in. You you'd grow your hyacinths in this. Yeah. Um, when it's in its finished state, of course. And what will this look like then when it's completed? Well, we have a, a, an example here of the, of the finished product. And oh. it's got this wonderful sort of marbled effect on the, on the outside. Isn't that clever? Waterproof interior uh, for growing your, your bulbs. Pulpware was so rigid and solid, it was the ideal material for moulding safety helmets for miners, horse riders, and by the middle of the 20th century, motorcyclists. All that remains of this once huge industry is a gigantic water wheel beneath the old mill. But it stirred Paul Clark, who lives here now, to become an avid collector of Thetford pulpware, especially the helmets. And this has got uh, cork inside it and leather and then they moved on and got into nylon I think. I've seen better days but of course unfortunately the uh, paper pulp was taken over by glass fibre. And this is made by the same firm, same company, it's now Centurion. So what's so special about you and your collection here? Well this is the home of Thetford Pulpware. It's the only surviving mill that actually made pulpware um, and these items were sold worldwide, and it's nice when they, when they come home. Interesting, eh? Mm. I've brought you a little piece of the uh -huh. pulpware. Well, it's lovely, isn't it? Very yeah. light. Mm -hmm. Why do they disappear? Well, they're not really very durable. Oh. Of course, inside, it's nothing more than paper, papier-mâché, yeah. but very nice things all the same. Absolutely. Now, it's time for the mystery objects, which we've shown you already. Yes. First of all, our cane. Mm -hmm. Here it is. As we showed you before, you can open it and see that inside is this length of wood. You hang on there. I will. And the clue is written here. Somewhere. Here. Here. I didn't see that before. Beer and wine, it says. Beer and wine. Now, it's believed that this is used by the government man when he goes round to the vintner or the wine merchant and he appears with his uh, walking stick. It's a disguise. It's a disguise. I and see. And then he whips out this measuring device. He knows the size of the barrel and he simply 
drops this into the bottom and he can work out exactly how much alcohol there is in the barrel. I see. It's pretty simple. And if you'd like to just pop that away, yeah, I will show you the other object, which of course is this extraordinary looking thing. And I'm going to give you a clue. Here is the clue. <laughs> I'd say it's a pretty big clue, isn't it? Literally. <laughs> Literally. It's a clog scoop. It is. It's what they used to use to get inside the clog and pull out the toe. Fantastic. Clog spoon. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, there are details of all of our shows at our website, itvlocal.com slash Anglia. That's all we've got time for in this programme. But join us next week when we look backward and forward in 3D with a fabulous collection of Viewmasters. And the mysteries of ancient Fenland remedies. Until then, have a very happy Christmas. Happy Christmas to you all. Wendy, crackers? Definitely. Ooh.